May finds herself in Elysium Everlasting, a data space made from Elysia's memories. She tries to find out more about Elysia's identity as the 13th Hersher of the previous era. As usual, the flame chasers tell her nothing useful except for Pardo who takes her looting treasure chest. At least that's something, right? May notices a strange creature following her around. She tries to pursue it, but it gets away. Later that day, Elysia shows May a typewriter that records all the information in Elysian Realm's database. This way, May can get an objective answer to all of her questions. To use the typewriter, they wake up elf Elysia, who is the administrator of the device. Using the data provided by the typewriter, May looks into Elysia's past and learns about her early mod days. Shortly, Sakura appears out of nowhere and asks about Vilvi's whereabouts. Apparently, she repaired the third divine key at Sakura's request. The conductor is wary of her because Sakura used to wield that sword back in Cocoon when she assassinated people. Not gonna lie, Pink is very sus right now. Back to May and Ali. It is revealed that the mod never approved the 13 flame chasers because they thought that most of them are not fit to become heroes. The two share a heartwarming moment as Elysia opens up about her feelings and insecurities. Finally, she promised to show May everything that happened at her final banquet the following day. Now that's a red flag if I ever seen one. Darkness falls over the Elysium everlasting. We see Sakura in front of a piece of paper from the typewriter and hear Elysia's voice. The next day, May is waiting for Elysia, but she never shows up. What a surprise, who would have thought? Anyway, May tries to find her, but to no avail. She learns from the other flame chasers that Elysia's data has disappeared completely from the realm, aka she's dead. We see Su searching the realm with his psychic powers for clues and noticing that the data of Sakura and Kaupas is also missing. After the typewriter confirms Elysia's death in a very subtle manner, Mei and Su team up to get some information out of the other flame chasers. Due to the plan yielding no results, May wants to leave the Elysian realm and ask for help from outside. While leaving, she gets dragged back into the realm and passes out while fighting a horde of monsters. Meanwhile, Kevin gives Sue his crystal flower and tells him that he knows the truth but cannot reveal it to anybody, not even Sue. Later, Kevin meets with totally not obvious from a mild Vilvi, uh, I mean a mysterious individual. The next day, Hua finds Mei unconscious in the lobby. Mei tells her that she cannot leave the realm anymore and the two return to Elysia's data space. Back there, Kaupas was found, but he was on a rampage. He got mad because the others suspect Sakura to be a traitor. He threatens to fight everybody, but Su uses Sumeru to send him to another part of the realm. Oh my god, is that a Genshin reference? As Mei is witnessing all of this chaos, papers from the typewriter fall from the sky and confirm that Kevin has also died. Mei goes to the amusement park to inform Vil V of what's happening. But the not so subtle inventor was already aware. To prove the innocence of the other flame chasers, Vilvi wants to use an invention that allows them to go inside their minds and look through their memories. May decides to go with Vilvi's idea since there is no better solution. Meanwhile, Hua and Su try to pursue Kalpas to stop, but they only manage to anger him even more. The madman goes berserk and tears down the space of the Elysian realm. It turns out that he never wanted to kill or harm the other flame chasers. He made all the ruckus to attract the attention of the real killer. As he destroys more and more of the realm, he is approached by an unknown entity that took his form. As Kalpas and less angry Kalpas talk, his deepest emotions and desires are revealed to us. 
Due to him being an alien, all he ever wanted was to feel like he belongs somewhere. He wished to protect the people around him and all this time his rage was directed at none other than himself for failing to do so. In the end, Kaupath was truly a good boy. Hua approaches Mei, Vilvi and Pardo with urgent news. Vilvi wants to use her invention to go into Hua's mind and prove her innocence and this way they would also find out the information she wanted to tell them. In Hua's mind, Mei and Pardo see that Mobius turned into Grim Pudding. Ah, I mean she, di she died, yes, she died. Finally, it is time for Vilvi to get... <laughs> <laughs> to get cleared of suspicions. I, I can't even say this with a serious face. May and Pardo enter her mind and find themselves in a space looking like the theater of domination. Pardo sees a sealed mirror and she has the worst possible idea imaginable. She wants to stay behind and unlock it while May continues to explore Vilvi's memories. She has clearly not seen many mystery movies that involve killers. May hears Pardo scream and rushes back only to find the shopkeeper's data disintegrating in front of her eyes. Vilvi reveals herself to be the actual traitor. Wow, who would have thought? Her evil personality came to the surface and was orchestrating the events while imitating the others to not attract suspicion. The evil Vilvi planned to trap Mei in her mind and partition that part off, imprisoning her for eternity. She reveals that Mei brought something inside the realm the last time she returned. The evil Vilvi was working with it and caused all the chaos. Kaupas's remaining data made its way to Aponia. She touched the deepest parts of his subconscious and met the last lingering of his persona. He tells Aponia that he proved with his own body that Sakura was innocent. His data completely disappears and Aponia reveals that the it that May brought into the realm is the hersher of corruption from the current era. After May met the will of the Honkai in Colostan, a part of the Hersher of Corruption got attached to her and followed May into the Elysian realm. The other part remained in reality. There, it was hunted down by Shixel, Anti-Entropy and the World Serpent. Raven and Grey Serpent found the last infected computer and sealed the Hersher inside Grey Serpent's body. His body was designed to function in the same way as the black box that previously sealed the Hersher in the previous era. RIP to the Coal Grey Serpent, your Aloha shirt will be missed. Meanwhile, the part that went with Mei learned by observing the Sims from the Elysian realm. When Mei fought Kaupas, the Hersher of Corruption developed a powerful survival instinct because of the fear it experienced, so it decided to remove every threat to its survival. And to be honest, after seeing this, I would all shit my pants. May is saved by the original Vilvi, who has awakened because more than half of her personalities died. She tells May that Vilvi noticed the Hersher and approached it because she was curious. After getting corrupted, the conductor threw all the corruption at the evil persona to get rid of it. In exchange for letting her live, the evil Vilvi agreed to help the Hersher get rid of May. Because she was not made out of data, in the Hersher's eyes, May was one of the biggest threats to her existence in the realm. But what the Hersher and the evil Vilvi did not know, it was that all of this was part of the conductor's plan. She wanted to wake up the original Vilvi because she was the only one able to stop the evil Vilvi and come up with a plan to defeat the Hersher of Corruption. In the end, Vilvi ended up playing herself with some other levels of planning and manipulation. The original Vilvi and May team up to fight the evil Vilvi. The original Vilvi repartitions her mind again and again, weakening the evil Vilvi and giving May a chance to overpower her. The evil Vilvi loses and is unable to maintain her data anymore. 
the original also dies because she lost too much of her data and can't sustain it anymore. Before dying, she gives May her crystal flower and tells her about the Kevin Killer 666, a device that could delete the entire Elysian realm with the Hersher of Corruption inside it. She also leaves some clues for Sue with instructions on how to bring back Elysia's data. After waking up, May finds herself face to face with the Hersher of Corruption who took Elysia's appearance. The Hersher of Corruption wants to prove May that it had no ill intentions. May saw through its deception and realized that it wanted to stall as much as possible to get its hands on Kevin Killer 666. Because Vilvi's invention can only be used by Elysia, the Hersher of Corruption needed to take her appearance and identity. May starts destroying the Elysian Realm's data, damaging the Hersher of Corruption in the process. The Hersher repairs the damage, but the commotion was enough to alert Sakura of their whereabouts. It turns out that Sakura knew all along about Rin's fate and was pretending to be oblivious this whole time. After she confronted Elysia about it that night, they were attacked by the Hersher of Corruption, who claimed to murder Elysia in self-defense. To save herself, Sakura froze the space around her to stop the corruption from spreading. Vilvi noticed that and left Sue a message on how to find Sakura. Sue used his own data to repair Sakura's data and sent her after Mei. Sakura and Mei team up to fight the Hersher of Corruption, but because Yar is a space made entirely out of data, the Hersher is an invincible being here. With Sue's help, Mei is removed to the frozen space created by Sakura earlier. According to Vilvi, they could bring back Elysia's data by creating a new data space from Mei's memories. In order to do so, Sue uses the same surgery that can create a sim on Mei's mind. Sakura stays behind to stall the Hersher like a true Giga Chad, but gets deleted soon after. Eponia tries to reach the deepest parts of the Hersher of Corruption's mind in search for remnants of Elysia's data. Soon, she realizes that she is not actually inside the Hersher of Corruption's mind, but inside Mobius's mind instead. Mobius planned to use an imitation of the previous era Hersher of Corruption to fight the current era Hersher of Corruption. In the past, Mobius experimented on the Hersher. She wanted to redefine humanity and find a way to transform people into virus-like entities. Her experiment partially failed due to her being a poor fit for it. Later, she decides to transform her sim into a quasi hersher of corruption. Because she was a being made out of data, she was much more fit for it than the real Mobius. Basically, the sim Mobius becomes an imitation of the previous era Hersher of Corruption and she wants to make multiple virus-like imitations to fight the Hersher. But before that, she asks Eponia to reconnect the realm back to reality. The Hersher's pursuit is stopped by Kasma. After a one-sided fight, Cosma's data is deleted but comes back almost instantly. Cosma willingly became one of Grisio's paintings to fight the Hersher without the fear of being corrupted. He wanted Grisio to turn his data into an ideal painting of himself, a painting in which he was a true hero. Without telling him, Grisio didn't change anything, proving that all the qualities that Cosma thought he lacked were always inside him. After the game makes you beat up a child as a last slap in the Hersher's face, Grisio tells the Hersher of Corruption that she used herself as a canvas for the painting because she didn't want Kasma to be alone inside the painting. Aww. Upset because she cannot absorb their data anymore, the Hersher of Corruption brutally and without any kind of remorse swings her arm and disintegrates Grisio and the painting's data. I find it really funny that with the other flame chasers, the game never goes into much details when they got corrupted or died, but for some reason, Hoyoverse really wanted us to have the image of this child being blasted into nothingness very clearly defined into our minds. While pursuing the Hersher, 
Aqua realizes that she can control the corrupted monsters. Mobius shows up in front of Klein and wants to use the Elysian Realm hardware to replicate the virus imitations that she made. Klein agrees to help but gets infected in the process. Mobius sacrifices her life and plan to escape into reality in order to save Klein and takes the corruption upon herself to protect the only person who understood her. After that, it is revealed that the reason why Hua was able to control the corrupted monsters was because she was the other successful test subject in the quasi 12th Hersher experiment, but she has no memories of it. Vilvi hid the data of Kevin and Pardo inside the Hersher of Corruption's mind. She wanted Kevin to take the Hersher by surprise and strike her with a powerful attack from inside. Sue uses his data to amplify Kevin's attack and Pardo is forced to sacrifice herself by holding open a point that directly connects to the Hersher of Corruption. What, you really thought that seeing her dying only once was enough? Not in this game. The attack leaves the Hersher greatly weakened. To complete their assault, Hua uses Feng Wan's down zeroth power and hits the Hersher with eminence, completely undoing her disguise as Elysia and rendering her unable to further pursue Mei. Mei tries to reconstruct Elysia in the newly formed data space, but fails. Eden and Elf Elysia show up and offer to use their data in order to help with the reconstruction. May learns that Elysia was never the 13th Hersher. She was born a Hersher long before any Hersher appeared, making her the true first Hersher. She was never an apostle of the Honkai. On the contrary, she harbored a deep love for humanity. In her final hours, Elysia wanted to pretend to be an enemy of humanity to unite the remaining flame chasers and give them hope for the future. She wished to send them an invitation to her last banquet in the form of a challenge for them to come and stop her. Ultimately, she hesitated because she didn't want to disappoint them. Vilvi, Kevin, Eden and Aponia showed up anyway to bid their farewell. The rest of the flame chasers ignored the higher ups orders and refused to see Elysia as a threat to humanity. After realizing that she is a Hersher, Elysia planned to return to the Honkai and use her powers to destroy the threads of fate that were binding Hershers and humanity to Honkai's will. Because of her sacrifice, the Hershers of the new era can keep their humanity and fight against the Honkai, becoming Hershers of human just like her. Before leaving, Elysia asked the rest to find a way to let her know if they ever meet a Hersher similar to her in the future. Now, we finally learn why Kevin was so desperate to recruit every goddamn Hersher that he came into contact with this whole game. After May reconstructs Elysia's data, the two relieve the banquet from 50,000 years ago and May thanks Elysia for giving her the chance to retain her humanity. Elysia expresses how happy she is to have met May because she is the living proof that her sacrifice was meaningful. In the end, May parts ways with the flame chasers and returns to reality. Elysia fights the Hersher of Corruption and uses the Kevin Killer 666 to delete the entire realm together with the Hersher inside. May finds Kevin standing in front of the entrance to the realm in a very cool but probably very uncomfortable position. Seriously, how much did this man wait for May to come out like this? Kevin finally wants to start Project Stigma, but May refuses to join him and leaves Word Serpent. Mm -hmm.